hello it's Guy here from GD Models today um, it's that time again where I'm down to one kit that I'm building obviously the De Havilland Mosquito um, so I would like you guys as the viewers to pick my next build um, I've got a well I got quite a few kits sort of like sitting waiting to be done uh, got quite a nice size stash but I've picked out four uh, four kits, and all all I'm asking you to do is put on the comments which one you reckon I should build next, and whoever get by, let's say Monday night, nah, actually, give it a week. Um, by Friday, whatever kit gets the most. Um, choices most votes i will build that kit right so basically we have as i said before the first one it's quite a long one so i have to show you the box on its side is this beauty here she is the obviously everyone knows the rms titanic the uh in one to three hundred and fifty scale it's the sort of limited edition, deluxe edition, which comes with photo etch, um, like a few bits of photo etch. Um, she, this ship is about the same size as a box, so she's about three foot long. I've been interested in Titanic for years, so. That's that's choice one. I've already got a built model of the Lusitania in the same scale, one to three hundred and fifty. Um, and obviously, I, I need a, really need a Titanic. Um, obviously, if you don't know about a Titanic, it was a very f famous uh, transatlantic liner that was made in Belfast between the 1909 I believe when the keel was laid to uh, 1912 beginning part I think it was March of 1912 but I might be wrong there um, and then she sailed to Southampton England um, and on April 10th 1912 obviously she sunk uh, sorry she sailed from Southampton to Cherbourg in France and then from Cherbourg, France to Cork which at the time was called Cork Soy which is in Ireland which is now called well sorry back then it was called Queenstown um, and then she sailed across the Atlantic in about a day, two days out on the night of the April 14th of 1912 um, at 11.45 I believe or 11.42 she hit an iceberg and she basically sunk with 1500 souls aboard um, and the wreck was discovered in the 80s I believe about 85 but I'm not 100% sure on that and obviously everyone's seen the film with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet so that's a bit about that kit I'm not going to go into showing you inside the box unless you choose this kit but I will say with this kit I do need to buy one upgrade kit and that's um, wood veneer decks um, which I don't mind doing, you know, I just run out and buy them in the next couple of weeks um, and they should be with me in the next couple of weeks. So if I order them, if you all say chose this, I'd order, order them Friday and they'll be here mid next week, uh, not this week, sorry, the following week. Um, so that's choice one, the Fable Liner, the Titanic, in one to 350 scale, so nice size. Um, the next one is something a little bit more, well, a little 
bit more modern an aircraft obviously we have got Rev Revelle's 1 to 72 scale Concorde British Airways um, this thing is big <laughs> it is just under three foot long um, wingspan is just over a foot obviously uh, I don't know much about Concorde I knew she was built in the 60s she was designed I believed in the 50s by a British company um, I think it was BAE that made her um, at a cost of some ridiculous fat money um, they made I believe 20 of them between England and France and basically Boeing uh, a lot of countries sorry pet bought Concorde did orders for Concorde but then when Boeing brought out their 747 which could carry a lot more people it basically put a stop to Concorde success pretty much straight away um, and it was then just used there was a few of them I think as I said I think there was about 20 20 20 of them that were used for um, like luxury aircraft um, very luxurious aircraft uh, that basically flew around the world the rich and famous basically because it could get you from A to B very quickly um, faster than any other uh, passenger aircraft repeat passenger aircraft Obviously, there is military aircraft out there that do fast, are faster than Concorde. So this thing, obviously, is a one to seventy-two scale. She's big, as I said, she's just under three foot. Um, so something a little different to what I normally build, like my bombers um, and my um, like jet fighters and that the only other bit of history I know about them um, is obviously they were decommissioned for a number of reasons firstly because of the cost of doing maintenance on Concorde got too much and the contractors who did that decided to pull out and basically they can repair them at a cheap cost so they deci uh, decided to discontinue them but that was only one of the reasons the other one was because there was a couple of crashes due to not the aircraft but the mechanical like the maintenance teams neglect shall we say which they didn't do things correct on the aircraft and that's why obviously they blew up on takeoff um, but that's Concorde for you, that's your second choice. Your third choice is another Tamiya 1 to 32, which if you've seen my build at the moment on the Mosquito, you pretty much can sum up what this kit's going to be like. It's going to be very detailed, um, lots of photo etch loads of engine detail and cockpit detail and loads of like removable panels like obviously the engine cowling uh, maybe the if there's guns in the wings maybe there's some things and also movable parts like um, the rudders the ailerons uh, maybe the canopy I don't know I haven't really had a look into this kit um, the history of it I don't have the foggiest. All I know is I'm going to be building it as a red tail, um, which is well, everyone builds them as red tails pretty much. But I do fancy building. Uh, she's not my favourite aircraft during World War Two. I know a lot of people love them. Uh, I'm more of a Spitfire bloke, me. Um, but how can you turn around and say you've got a uh, collection of World War Two aircraft and not have a P fifty one? That's all I can say. So 
I will be building up as a red tail, which I know a little bit about the red tails. Obviously, they were um, American African pilots during World War Two. That they basically, I think they're from Kentucky, um, and they basically were very, very good pilots, and they led the way for. Uh, other jobs for um, African Americans to get into in the armed forces but don't quote me on that I'm not 100% sure but that is all I know about the P-51 um, as I said if you want it if you want to see this kit build just just whack a vote on this one um, she's going to be very similar to my Mosquito build. Obviously, Mosquito is a newer kit because the Mosquito only came out last year. Um, I don't know when this came out. I think it's quite a new one. I think it's about five years old, maybe slightly older. I don't have a clue. But that's your third choice. And your final choice is something a little different, well it's not different, it's another aircraft, but it's another Tamiya 1 to 32. Um, but this one is qu quite an oddity really because I can't find this uh, kit on the UK market anywhere. Um, I had, to, uh, for my birthday I got a bit of birthday money and I ordered it off Amazon from Asia. So. Um, I don't know whether they've discontinued it in Europe and England, um, but it was a bit of a pain in the ass to get hold of. Uh, but otherwise, as I said, I'm building a collection of 1 to 32 scale aircraft. Um, I want to have a nice collection of them, and how could I not? How can I have a collection without a Mitsubishi Zero Fire? Um, I don't know much about the Zero Fighter. I know at the time, which would be 1941, they were one of the most advanced aircraft of their time. Um, quite to other a lot of countries' surprise. Um, they were very agile. Um, obviously, the the build I'll be doing is the one on the front cover of the yellow uh, stripes on the back, which I've already looked at what it is. It's the lead plane of the second attack wave that hit Pearl Harbor on the morning of 8, uh, December the 7th, 1941. Um, and she was launched from the aircraft carrier Akagi, which was obviously the flag carrier of that battle uh, for the Japanese. Um, so, obviously she's, I think she's a little older this kit, she's not in such a big box. There's the um, like the Mustang or the Corsair or the Mozzie, um, but I have had a quick sort of like look in the kit, and uh, it looks like it's got retractable landing gear, which is a new one, uh, rubber tires, which you don't expect really anything less from Tamiya, but obviously the Mozzie has got plastic tires. Um, photo etch like the other ones it's basically just like one like the mosquito or the uh, the corsair or the mos yeah mosquito mustang or corsair they're pretty much all the same um so that's your fourth choice um so basically i'll leave the voting up to you and Please message me as soon as possible. Leave the comments below. 
and I'll give you guys a week to choose which uh, which model you want me want to see me build. Uh, thank you for taking your time out of the day to watch these videos. I do apologise as well to all your all the people who like watching me make motorbikes, but I am very sad to announce I have actually no more motorbike kits kits in my stash, and there's nothing too appealing on the market at the moment. There was a few that I was a bit interested in. Um, some like multimedia kits, which I was going to try a multimedia kit, which is obviously metal resin parts. And I've, they're slightly better quality and um, very detailed, but obviously they come with a rather large price. So I haven't got the money at the moment to get one of them which is a shame but that's why I'm leaving you with these four decisions um, so as I said please get back to me and just message me below and let me know which one you want to see me build thank you for watching and happy modeling and have a great night goodbye